Springtime is such a great time to throw a jerk bait. It's probably one of the most effective pre-spawn tools that you can ever throw. And it lasts, you know, for early pre-spawn, you know, basically winter stages through the pre-spawn, you can still catch them during the spawn. Works very well post-spawn through the summer. Really, it's a year-round technique. But honestly, in the spring, if I don't have a jerk bait tied on, it means I'm way up in the swamp in Florida somewhere and you can't throw a jerk bait. So there's really a lot of different jerk baits that you can use. I've kind of got it narrowed down to deep divers like this right here, the pointer 78 DD. I will throw a pointer 100 DD. And the 78 I really like when the bait's small or it's really calm out. If it's really calm, that, that bait is very subtle, does not have a real loud knock to it. To me, I just feel like dead slit calm, maybe it's sunny. I can get a few more bites on that than I can on the other baits. A lightning pointer is one of my other favorite jerk baits. And then the slender pointer. The slender pointer is a really good jerk bait that they have had for a long time. Uh, I actually like this bait when I'm fishing shallower, meaning that this bait does not get as deep as the lightning pointer. It definitely does not get as deep as the deep diver. Uh, this I can fish in like that six to eight foot range. Literally, you can get that bait down to eight feet deep. You can get these baits down to you know deeper depths if you're running a tattoo elite reel. Over the last you know year and a half, I've been running these elite reels. And I've noticed that you know, it's designed for distance casting. So I have noticed that I can take that bait, throw it farther, keep it in the strike zone for longer, and also get it deeper. Just about every bass that bites a jerk bait is coming from below to come and get it. So if you get it closer to them, they don't have to travel as far, and I think they're more likely to bite it. The longer they have to travel to come and get it, I think they see it better and they decide not to actually bite it. So the deeper you can go, you will get more bites. The longer you get to fish it and keep it in the strike zone, you will get more bites as well. But slender pointer, this is the 127. I'm trying to mimic large forage, large bait. I have two different colors, Aurora Black and Chartreuse Shad. The reason for that is just water clarity. More of the clearer water and overcast, I'm gonna go with the Aurora Black. When it gets sunny, I will throw the uh, chartreuse shad uh, and also uh, stained water when I get a little bit dirty water I'm gonna go with a chartreuse you know shad but the other thing I will do is I'll, if I pull up to a staging spot usually I like to fish staging spots with a jerk bait meaning like a secondary point a flat leading into a pocket something where those fish are transitioning to go to the bank and what I'll do is I'll make a, a, a quick pass through it with one color and I'll immediately pick up the other one and kind of do a bait and switch, go back and forth. And I can't tell you how many times I'll throw one and fish it for 10 minutes, 10 minutes, nothing, nothing, nothing. Pick this one up and first cast, I'll get a bite. So sometimes that little change in color will help. Now, if the water is going to get really clear, I go with a ghost color, like a ghost minnow. As far as cadence for throwing these, you know, it, it varies. I fish it relatively fast. I don't really fish it that slow unless it's really, really cold and then I will slow it down a little bit. The only other time I will slow it down is if I'm working that bait and I see one follow it on my pan optics that Garmin has. If I see that fish following it, I slow it down. And I can't tell you how many times I get those fish to bite by slowing it down. And sometimes I can see how they react to it. When I twitch that bait, I can see how they move to it and decide when to kind of hold it, when to dead stick it, when to pop it really fast, and vary with the retrieve when that fish is behind it. But other than that, it's a standard fairly fast and just cover a lot of water and catch one of those active fish. You know, I get asked all the time, when do I throw a DRS, which is the deep rattle sound, the one with the knock, and when do I throw the silent running 1.5? Very simple. When it's calm, I throw the silent. When it's bright and sunny, I throw the silent. When the water is clear, I throw the silent. The DRS to me is adverse conditions. Wind, rain, overcast, and muddy water. That's when you throw the DRS. If they have a hard time seeing it, 
let them feel the vibration, let them hear that knock and come and find it. If they can see it for a long time, throw the one that is not as loud and go with the silent. That's the difference for me on throwing the DRS versus the silent.